There's just certain things that are said made to piss people off. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, I actually, I wanted to mention that. I'm not going to get offensive. Do I have permission, Bill, to talk about <laughs> <laughs> Too but, late. But, you're already offensive. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, no, I was talking to my friend about how, uh, you know the... You know the actor who plays the wife in Jurassic Park, the blonde chick? Mm. She's the she's the girl that the guy has a crush on in Blue Velvet. Okay. Well, so so you know what I'm talking about, John? No. You don't remember the the, the that Jeff Goldblum's hitting on the whole movie in Jurassic Park? She's bl- she's the other uh like person fascinated by by the park. Yeah, no, I, I did he win her over that the movie end? like well, 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 no. It's like well, what I was saying to my friend is the way the way me- media is like the number one thing making money right now, and it's fueling all this shit. The reason why I say that is one, I watched a KKK documentary on Netflix. How was it? Honestly, it was incredibly, incredibly interesting. And this is gonna, I'm gonna keep back, I'm gonna keep forward tracking, because for example, my friend said, uh. You know, oh, I deleted this person off Facebook because they're this uh, political movement. Sure. And I told him, well, dude, I have pr- uh, I have a friend who's, I and I do, I have a friend who's a Black Panther. They fucking hate white people. They actually stopped doing comedy because they only do, like, comedy against white people. But then I have a friend who just came out of prison, and he's, like, a, a Nazi skinhead. And I, and I, and he said, how could Whoa. you be friends with both of them? Do I smell sitcom? Yeah, right. Get Larry David in it. <laughs> but well, well the 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 truth is and I can completely relate because I hung out with both sides of those people in real life. I was at a party where there was Black Panthers and then I was at I got my ass beat to shit at a skinhead party. Both these people, they're still good people, but they got shit and and predictably in the KKK documentary, they show a whole lot about I forgot which town. I think it was somewhere in Alabama. Of but, course. But they were having a uh, protest, and then the Black Panthers were coming, and they were showing, even though it's a KKK documentary, half of it is about the KKK and its history, and then the Black Panther movement and their um, reaction to it. And both both sides are like, how do you feel about this person's race? And they're like, oh, well, I think they're they're good people. They just need to keep their shit to themselves. I I respect them. I could live with them. I could see them at the grocery store. And what? And when they ask them, they're like, "Well, how did you grow up?" And they're like, "What? The, like the hillbilly redneck KKK guy?" He's like, "Well, you know, I, I went to an all black school, and he kept calling me cracker, white boy, and and they would they would throw lunch at me, and I didn't really have a father to teach me how to stand up for myself. So I was like, I got to join the KKK. And and then the black guy's like, well. I never had a father, and you know what? You know, I had all these white boys in this town, you know, you know discriminating me, beating me up. And it's like, dude, all, these are good people who just have some kind of emotional issue who are trying to probably, most of them are fatherless. Both guys that I'm friends with online are fatherless, and they're just trying to f- get their rage out in some way that they re- they really don't know how to get that rage out, you know? I mean the 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 way like w- when you get older and you're just you're nine to five. Once you get the, past that midlife crisis, you're working a nine to five job. You're you got all this stress in you. So what? It, so some people don't do shit and they get re- they're really like pissed off people. Well, some people I don't know like me. I I try and exercise. Some people go to shows. Some people go to a bar and and socialize with people. Get you know, yeah. You, you, you know you just you just hang out with you got you you have to vent somewhere and these are just people who they're angry people and they don't know where to put that ang- anger towards you know sure it's how they cope they're they're confused with life yeah it's and um i don't even know where the fuck i to so, how i got started <laughs> so here's a question for you oh oh you know what it was a uh, uh, quick thing the, the the debate i had at work was Somebody post. Um, I think it, I think it was the Black Panther guy. He posted like, "Oh shit, this white bitch getting all her love from this black guy," and it was the it was the um, it was the chick from Jurassic Park, the actor. She's got like a like a 
foot taller black boyfriend and he's making out with her and the article says this white chick getting all the loving she needs and it's like that is totally made to piss people off oh for sure but if i was at work which and and this there's a shitload of black and white couples they're making out they're fucking you you know they're they're, you could see them talking about oh who who's on top tonight on on you know uh messenger or something it's sure. like i don't give a fuck about that they're they're in love with each other they're great people but you know that shit that's all being fueled by all this media shit and that's what i learned from the documentaries all this shit it doesn't even exist everybody loves each other naturally but you you, you try and find a group that you can uh make a mob with and hate on because and and that's the people who make these mobs is the people who are bored have a nine-to-five job and don't know how to vent it you know, it was it was pretty entertaining though. I gotta admit, the one thing that was the most entertaining there was a three year old in a KKK hoodie, and they're like, yeah, his first word is "want power." Like, I'm like, okay, great. Is this a South Park episode? You know, <laughs> it sounds like South Park. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for our viewers out there, you were I I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh well, now I'm going back to my question. You're yeah. good. I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm going to interrupt you. Um, All white walls. Now I'm <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> uh, Blackfish or KKK documentary? I loved Blackfish. You loved it as in it was a really powerful documentary? Like, Dude, I, I was I was crying at the end of the movie. But the Have KK you- one, no. No, the KK one was very educational and informative on on current state. You know. Okay. You're, t- you're talking about the Killer Whale movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why, why the two? Why those two? Well, they're both documentaries. Yeah. So, well, like, if I had to watch one, like, because I've not seen either of them, which one do you think would be more worth my time? Like the KKK one or Blackfish? I think both, honestly. Okay. I I, w- I would have to say both. One after the other. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I I like a lot of documentaries. Sure. I would think I was talking about Icarus, the one with uh, well, I don't even know if I talk about it, but you go on Netflix. There's what, two hundred. Everybody's getting their shit on there. You could be some independent, ridiculous fucking Paul Piper want to make a documentary about psychedelic, you know, Sid Sid, Barrett. Sid Barrett's life. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sid Barrett used to wear these color speedos, but people don't know it. You know, <laughs> like. And, and and that's why having those balls that tight, that's actually why he was tripping. No. But there's so many documentaries out there, and they're just so fu- – some of them are so fucking dumb. I can't even think of, like, the, the origin of paper, which, <laughs> you know, or or where – where how – why is the funny bone so funny, you know? And you, and, you, and you stretch it out in three hours. And that's why I think – Something like, all right, I want I wanted to see Blackfish because I love the ocean. I love killer whales. And then the KKK thing, it's just like it really relates to shit that's going on right now because everybody's saying everybody's protesting. There's all this race thing going on. And I and I, I told myself, I'm like, that's another resolution in 2018. I don't want to get involved in that shit. But seeing it was quite interesting. Sure. And the other the other thing too is it that that's the other thing too that you that before you see it, the beginning part tells about its history and the really fucked up lynching, beatings, uh, you know all that, the hangings. And that's the part that's really fucked up. And they sort of try and explain that a lot of those movements now, same with uh, Black Panthers with bank robberies and and robbing armored cars and and just drive bys and selling crack to the community, like. All that stuff is sort of over, and it's more uh, just focused on um, social issues. Sure, like contemporary. Yeah. Like so, so then and now. And, and there was a lot of people on both sides on Black Panther Party and KK, where they were like, they ask them, "How do you feel about the political movement?" They're like, they're, and they're they're like, "I don't even fucking care about politics. I'm here because uh, we barbecue, and it's some place for my kids to hang out, other than go to a." you know, a uh, playground or get into trouble. So we hang out here and there's a really great community of people. Like they don't even, they don't fucking care about the ideals or any of it for on both sides. Huh. Interesting. So 
it may it may it it sort of soften it up a little. You doubt the history. All history in the past is fucked up. No matter what you looked up, there's sure. fucked up aspects. But it's re- it really shows. The reason why it was good for me was it shows that my argument again that right now, I mean, think about think. This is the way I look at it. You got shit like Google Mini, where you say, "Hey, what's the temperature today? What's it going to be on Sunday?" And it tells you. You got shit. Oh, um, has I don't know what's the murder count in Chicago, and then it crashes. No, but you you got all these things. You got and you got Google itself. You got YouTube. All all this information. I mean, news is why the fuck does anybody even own a, a like local television? You get all this info, so media has to control people's minds to try and come up with something really fucked up like these clickbait articles to to fuel something that doesn't even exist because i used to get anxiety reading all this crap about about race and like oh my i have to really watch myself when i'm with people and then you go somewhere like to work to a bar to a show and it's like this shit only exists virtually because of because of media fueling it so it made me happy to know that these people can actually get along with each other if they weren't completely brainwashed by what the dying and fading away of media and news is doing, you know? Fair enough. Also, just because, and a point I want to bring up, yeah. is just because there's one person talking on a documentary doesn't mean that that's representative of a whole group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there could be KKK dudes out there that are like, oh yeah, dude, like, black people hate them, want them all to die, but they're not going to interview him. Yeah. Because, like, that doesn't flow into what they want the movie to be about. Yeah. Same thing just as much with the Black Panthers. Like, I'm I'm sure there's fellas out there that are like, yeah, white people don't really care for them, want them all to leave, hate them. Yeah. You know, so... Can I use your lighter? Yeah. Not to interrupt. (laughs) But I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. Oh, I I definitely, definitely see that. Um, You know what I mean? So it's all, like... You you know what I'm really loving about... um, these uh how far and dangerous they can take these act- because how you said well I'll let this real quick light a cigar this shit's so much strong when you know you're burning your untrimmed mustache with it I was gonna say you're not shaving and like I don't mind not like trimming my beard but my mustache like I have to trim that, because otherwise it gets in my mouth and it's just like, yeah, uh, really yeah, unpleasant. Been saying it's really weird to make out now. <laughs> I so, wonder why. I am the walrus. <laughs> Cuckoo, kachu. Well, uh, no. Well, how, how you were? It, so you were saying it, documentaries. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's funny how you're saying. Um, they might not interview the uh, the dangerous sort of people who are really sort of extremists. Have you guys heard of well, th- that whole hungover day? I just watched all fucking Netflix. No. Yeah. But have you guys heard of the show Dope? No. Just the band. Yeah. yeah. American no. Apathy. No, yeah. Dude, dude, I highly... Well, at least the sh- they have an episode on Chicago. And what they do is they take... Uh, once again, this is my review of it. They sort of put dash cams on. They go to each city and they try and study how our drugs and drug wars run in that city. And they go to Chicago, and that shit is fucking crazy. Because I'm watching this and I'm telling myself, how how are these people not in trouble? Because they put the cams on the cops in the city. They take them to the the evidence room and they're like, you know, I I, I think when it was filmed, it was uh, it, it was it was March 2016. And the cops are saying, you know, we're getting ready for Memorial Day. That's when the most murders happen. That's when the most drugs are sold. Right now, this is what we have. He's in a room the size of my bathroom, and there's, he throws down this, it's the size of like a Super Nintendo. It's like, this is worth $3 million of heroin. We've got 40 more boxes of this that we've already busted. And he's he says it's 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 like 20 weeks or something away from memorial day he's like it already started and this is what we have imagine how full this room is going to be 
And then they take the dash cams on all the gangs. I think they interview the vice lords. Mm. Obviously, all the gang members got uh, bandana masks and purge masks on. Mm. But it is fucking crazy. <laughs> they got a guy. Uh, they got a guy that goes from Indiana to Chicago, and he's the arms dealer. And that shit is fucking nuts. They got like silenced Uzis that you see in, I think like GoldenEye or Call yeah. of Duty. James Bond, yeah. The co- the coolest one they had because I couldn't believe it because he's like, oh, this is a Glock. This is the best, most accurate pistol you can get. It's uh. I forgot what he said. It was like a really strong steel, and that's why it's best because it's the most accurate. He's like, this will go for 1500 And then he pulls out this. It's a custom built. It's an AK-47. So it's got an AK-47 clip, but it's modeled on the 1930s Tommy gun, okay. and and it's, it's chrome, like actual silver jewelry plated. So it looks like something out of a Gucci main video. And he's like, oh, this will go for 2500 I'm like, that's fucking cheap. I got to find this guy. <laughs> hey, you know? Check eBay. Yeah. <clears throat> but it, it's it's really cre- – and so I don't know if that really goes in, ties into what you were saying, how they might not interview all the people. But I, what I'm saying is I watched this thing. I was like, I don't even know that – I was like, you know, I, I don't even know that this is going on right. in Chicago. and It could all <coughs> – God. <coughs> Cotton candy. No more cotton candy. <coughs> You're getting that cotton candy lungs. It's a new right. new well, found cancer. Cotton candy's bad for you. You don't need <laughs> cotton candy. But like you don't like you trust that that's like real, but you don't know that that that's the real. Like yeah. But but th- but that's with anything. I'm like you know? and, I'm, and 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 th- and you know that's the other thing. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going to. <laughs> that that's the other thing with with anybody um I I think that's why I would say I'm liberal, but everything now is alt left. And what I mean by that is anybody you speak with, well, you you you're just a, you're just a fucking rich privileged talking about statistics and and percentages. Well, yeah, statistics are evidence. That's called due process. That works. Yeah, but you don't know each and individual person. But then here's our issue where we're saying you can't trust this individual person. So obviously what I'm saying is there's a problem and there's a lot of excuses being made. I'm and, just saying. And that's why when, when they interview a bunch of people in a documentary, I kind of trust it. So especially that, that guy was the – he was one of the founders so I would, uh, well, the KKK one. And, and then the Black Panther one, I think he was like a third generation of uh, um, a leader that was jailed. I sure. Don't know. A fine legacy. Yes. Uh, but if I was an arms dealer in Chicago yeah, and someone reached out to me like, hey, dude, you want to go on camera, be a part of this documentary? Yeah. I'd say no fucking way. Yeah. What I'm dealing or what I'm doing and what I'm dealing is super fucking illegal. Like you keep yeah. your cameras as far the fuck away from me as you can. Also, how do you know who I am? Who's a snitch? Like I, it was it was made by a guy in um he was British from uh he's uh, BBC, which is why I liked him. <laughs> which is why I liked it more because he's not biased. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on in Chicago. Sure, um, and so he'll be like, well. Hello, I I I'm a, you know I'd like to quite. The, the jolly good guns. Are you, are you, you guys have, mad? Yeah. Or are the police mad? The Bollocks. You're tell mad. me, lads. Tell me about the guns you're selling. Yes. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm very, very skeptical about anything I read. Or well, I mean, if, if you're, oh, and, and all the voices, is, well, especially all the gangbangers, all their voices are completely warped. It sounds like a tobacco sure. song. <laughs> or Black Moth Supreme. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which made it a lot scarier when you got a chrome-plated Tommy gun with that voice, and then you got a you know purge mask on. Right, but maybe that was just part of how they're like trying to convey it yeah. as the truth. Well, like, uh, oh, what would make this scarier? They don't want to disguise their voices, but let's just disguise it, make yeah. it all the more intense. And then, well, well, what made it even cooler is they they put it on the cop side too, and they showed an entire raid of a crack house. And how you're supposed to like knock a certain amount of times and 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 um, I don't know. It, it was it was interesting and it was dangerous. So it was kind of cool. Sure. Especially 
you know, the hospital that I go to for my help, it's like five blocks away from there, that neighborhood. Yeah. So, so it reminds you, like, hey, I know that place. Yeah. That's where I bought my Glock. If I overdose on crack, I'll, you know, get the hospital right there. Sure. That Anyway, I don't know. I'm skeptical about everything. But I, I, I could see that. St- and, and I could see that I completely understand the skepticism. Yeah. And I'm going to keep rambling about documentaries. Sure. <laughs> because the, the other thing, did I go, did I tell you guys about Game Changers? Mm, wait, Game Changer was the Sarah Palin movie. Did you did no. you see that? No. No. It's not that good. No, no, no. I, well, so this wasn't a documentary. It was a, uh, I guess, biopic, kind of like that Tupac movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, ba- have you ever heard of that, John? Game Changers? No, I haven't. Dude, that is super fucking interesting. But not the Sailor, or the Sarah Palin. Not, one. not the Sarah Palin. Okay. This one was made only for TV. So it was, suppo- it was not supposed to get a good reaction. A lot of people don't like it because, uh, well, what it's about is how Grand Theft Auto got fucking huge. How it went from, um, only being in the UK and like, and, and it makes, for me and John, I think it's funnier only because, I remember when you gave me that ripped version before GTA came out in uh, America. Do you I, remember? No, I played it first in America. You did no, but you had that like burned copy or something. That was probably from Europe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it so it, and, and then and then once it got big, it went to the whole GTA in, U, in London or whatever, and then it went to yeah. two and three. Well, it's 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 about the whole biopic is about that moment between where it started getting huge, and then when Vice City came out. There was a kid who <laughs> stole a cop car, shot a whole fucking place up, and then and, and it sort of tells the story about how like the lawyer uh, tries to. It's it's the, all the Wait, bullshit. Was about, it Jack Thompson? I don't remember. Do you know the lawyer's name? No, so I don't. know he's a guy that's was, really was anti super, video game. Was he super like Catholic? Probably. It was played by Bill Paxton, so I could see Ooh, that. Ooh, okay. But I love Bill Paxton, but. Um, and, and here's the reason why they, a lot of people didn't like it. The, the guy who made GTA was played by Harry Potter, the Daniel Dan o- Radcliffe, yeah. but, but it's really cool because what they do is, so they take these three guys from London and it shows how the, the reason why it's a biopic and it says it's based on true events is because it tells the story of the GTA side. So for legal reasons, they don't want to, you know, if it's biased against, the gaming board and this fucking lawyer, you know, they want to be like, oh, well, this is actually fictional. So anyways, these three guys that made GTA, it gets fucking huge off Vice City. They're like, what are we going to do next? You know, we made GTA. What's the one? I think it's three where the guy looks like he's Max Payne. And he doesn't talk. Is that the one? I have no idea. It's like New York City and the guy doesn't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, but but it's still, but it's not like overhead view. It's third Correct. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they made that one. That yeah. hit off. They that made was that. like the first third person one that they did. Yeah, yeah. And then they move on to Vice City, and then this shooting happens, oh, and they're th- right. and while they're getting contacted, like, oh, you're gonna get sued. This guy made it, uh, shot up a place. They say, well, um, what are we gonna do next? Fuck, we don't give a fuck about this. It, it's the same shit as like Columbine and trying to hassle sure. Marilyn Manson for his music. They're like, they're not going to go after us. We'll win. So the, so the Daniel Radcliffe, he's like, what are we going to do that's going to be totally super American, only American, and about their society? And they're thinking of making San Andreas. So these three guys, they go to Compton and just live there for like, I think like two weeks. And they're, they're literally mapping out an entire area in Compton to be virtual. And how you were saying like, oh, if you walk up to a gamer and you're like, hey, man, do you want to be part of this documentary? They almost got shot like three times. They show how they went up to like a bunch of crips and they're like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? And they start talking like in an English accent and all trembling. Like, oh, we're making a video game. Do you guys want to be the star? You know, and and they that's that's pretty much what they did. So what do you so what do you guys do? Show us what a dr- yeah. show, show us what a drive boy is like. All right. What do you put your graffiti? You know, and and that's kind of that's pretty much how GTA was made. Or San Andreas was made, which is kind of cool. Which, one of my favorites. Yeah. So oh, much character customization. Yeah. Like, you build up weapon skills. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. And how, like, uh, what's his name? One of them is based on Ice Cube. One of them is based on Easy e That's my favorite <laughs> one. I yeah. forgot what his name Big is. Big Smoke. Yeah, yeah, Big Smoke. Gotta get back to Grove Street. Yeah. Uh, so, 
that that was really cool i i obviously i don't think bill paxton lawyer won because what we're on gta 5 now yeah so yeah gta 6 probably soon you think yeah. probably so five has been around for like yeah like four or five years. years is it has it been seven really has Maybe it been not, that long i don't know something like that though Man. Oh, and the other. Oh, that's what was funny. Do you guys know about Hot Coffee? In there, yeah. Hot Coffee. Scene? The the sex app. Yeah, that's yeah. after the lawyer tried to fuck over the whole Grant the Ro- Rockstar. That's what he was trying to go after. Is just Rockstar in general. Yeah. After he tries to fuck him over, they're like, you 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 don't get shit. That was just a dumb kid who r- k- shot up a bunch of people and stole a police car. Like, why why is an every GTA fan doing that? You're full of shit. And then they found that because of coding and all that, they found the hot coffee scene. And he's like, oh, well, well, I have Catholic values. And, you know, the, the, here's here's two people fucking. Yeah, that, that fuck scene is ridiculous. It's like two <laughs> blow-up dolls on each other because yeah. of the graphics, you know. So it was it was interesting. Should I keep ranting about documentaries? Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I think now is a good time to take a break. Yeah. Am I... Water break? Yeah. yeah. Do a quick water break. I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs>